I'm a biologist and I want to look at the wildlife and I want to know what's in the river and whether it's healthy. But when I go out on the boat and I bring in those nets full of fish, it's not just fish. Actually, quite a lot of it is plastic. And I really can't look at those animals and look at those fish and work out how healthy they are, if their populations are stable or anything like that, without considering that plastic. We ingest a credit card's weight worth of plastic every single week. That is five grams of microplastic that we're ingesting every single week. Good morning, everyone. My name is Malati. I'm 19 years old. I'm not a CEO or a head of an international institution. So without a business plan, without a strategy, we started an NGO called Bye Bye Plastic Bags. And after six years of hard work and massive collaboration, as of last year, Bali officially implemented the ban on plastic bags, straws, and styrofoam. It doesn't look that bad from afar, not, not compared to what we have here in, in Indonesia, at least. And those buildings, they look so pretty, so London-y. What, what are we looking at here? Is that a wet wipe? Yeah, it's one of thousands of wet wipes that are in this area. It is truly horrific what is on this river, really. Wow, how long have these wet wipes been there? They look like they've been sitting there for ages. So some mm -hmm. of the plastic we're pulling from the river is 30 years old. We've got a hula hoop crisp packet and the best before date is 1986. So it's older than I am. That's the craziest thing, right? Like that chip packet might have been the chips that I ate 30 minutes ago or hang on a second, that's my toothbrush. After we're done using it, where does it end up? How can it be legal to flush that many wet wipes down the toilet that they end up in the River Thames in that quantity? Surely there should be labelling restrictions or production restrictions for what those companies can make. I think one of the biggest problems right now is the fact that currently there is no consequence for industry to continue business as usual. If we do not create incentives, if we do not create a reward system, a consequence system, there will be no progress. I look at the animals in the Thames and how much plastic they're eating. And then it's a case of what material is that? Is that polyester? Is it nylon? And that really helps us understand what the potential sources are. So I don't know if you can tell, but you see this sort of ball of plastic? That came from the stomach of a crab and it is over a hundred pieces of plastic in here. No so way! If we're looking at a crab that's body is about five to seven centimetres, so it's maybe this sort of size. If you've got a piece of plastic, that size it's huge by comparison that type of data you know that information is oftentimes the missing link to move policy right so data influences that policy because a lot of the times as well next to the you know excuse that people are not ready for change it's always that we don't know enough right and and that's so frustrating for me to hear as an activist because i know there are people like you out there gathering all of this really necessary information and so connecting that to policy and to those decision makers, you know, it, it moves the needle. 